manual journal entries that are unusual or material. Moving on the right side of the page, respond to identified risk, and then we evaluate the audit evidence. And anything we find that may be uh, of material nature and fraud, obviously, we, again, we report to this committee. The next page, page six, is a, a, a flow chart, basically, of our methodology and our approach, talking about the planning and risk assessment, control, evaluation, testing, our substantive testing and completion and reporting. On the next slide, on page seven, we go into a little more detail of what all that means. Obviously, in our audit planning and our risk assessment, that sets the tone for the entire audit. What is going on in this specific year that is of high risk? And what can we do to design our audit and our procedures, whether it be control testing or substantive procedures? What can we do to test those specific risks? Under control evaluation and testing, these are some of the things that we do as far as control testing, cash receipts and revenue, property tax billings, purchasing, bank recs, journal entries. So these are the things that we're testing to make sure the processes are whole and are good. And if there are any breakdowns in those controls, these are controls, again, set by management, and we're auditing those controls and then testing them on a, on a, a, a a stat sample to see if, in fact, those controls that they have in place are, are up to snuff. On the right side of the page is sub substantive testing. Sometimes control testing doesn't get you all the way you need to be, so you, we do some substantive testing, whether it be like treasury investments, we're sending confirmation, uh, we're price testing. So we're going after those third parties to verify specific balances. If, we're, if there's significant purchases, in capital assets, we're looking at invoices directly from the contractors. We're looking at bids. We're looking at the OPEB actuary report, and again, a third-party resource. So those are the kind of things that we're, we're trying to do with the substantive testing. So when you put all that stuff together, we're able to complete our report, and then the final thing is to report. And again, that's to report to this committee. The next page, uh, page 8, is our single audit. Again, this is under the Uniform Guidance Audit. Uh, this year, we are, uh, Metro government is low risk, which means we have to tw cover 20% of the total federal expenditures. If you are high risk, uh, we would have to cover 40%. So it's uh, a significant amount more testing. Um, the reason, the main reason that you're low risk is because you didn't have any material weaknesses in each of the last two years in any parts of the, of, of the Metro government. We list three uh, major programs that we expect to test, um, two in the Department of Education, one in Homeland Security. We don't know for sure. We're going to get the CIFA, the Schedule of Expenditures of Federal Awards, from management you know, later on in the year, and then we'd be able to specifically identify. We use our criteria uh, set forth by uh, the federal government that under the uniform guidance that, that helps us pick what those major programs are. And this is just a guess based on past audits. But, you know, we, we could test the CARES Act again, award. You know, it just it depends. Page 9 is significant activity and, and issues. These are just, you know, four large issues that, really three large issues that we traditionally test, you know, if there's any new debt issuances or major capital projects, grants, of course. That last one, state comptroller issues, that really was a holdover from last year um, uh, that, that was um, really addressed in 2020. But we'll just make sure that's all. Anytime you have a, a, a yellow book audit, you, we have a contract audit with the state as well. And so we have to, we have to directly report to the state, uh, upload our report. And so there's, there's constant co correspondence in any yellow book audit where we have to communicate with the state. Page 10, prior year, prior year issues and recommendations. Again, we didn't have any material weaknesses last year, nor did we have any compliance findings in the single audit. We did have three significant deficiencies that we already went over with this with this committee, um, I don't know, five, four, five, six months ago or something <laughs> like that. I mean, we can dig back into them again, but honestly, based on the 
the responses from the various departments and um, the circumstances that created these significant deficiencies. I, I'm expecting this to be okay this year. On page 11 and 12 are new pronouncements, GASB pronouncements. Uh, you might remember last year because of COVID, the GASB did not, they delayed all the issuances. They pushed it back one year. Um, so right now, really under June 30, 2021 audit, GASB 84 and GASB 90 are the only things that are applicable to Metro. And I, I, they, I just don't anticipate they have any material, uh, any significant in on the report at all. But we are constantly, obviously, looking at all these new issuances, and, and Phil and his team are plenty on top of it um, and to make sure that the reporting is in compliance each year. Page 13 is our timeline. Really, there's no, I don't think there's any changes from last year. I know last year went, we had to extend a little bit of time just because it was such a strange year for a, <laughs> a number of reasons, but um, this is the normal uh, timing that we expect to, to uh, get back this year. Page 14, this is just a list of uh, our deliverables, the reports we plan on issuing, and our anticipated completion dates. And then finally on the last page we have our, our contacts and emails, numbers, names, and just know that we are always available throughout the entire year if anybody needs to call us or email us or if you need anything. We are always available. Good. Questions? Anybody have any questions? Just a <clears throat> couple things, um, and they're not so much questions, but thank yous. And um, I, you were talking about the timeline earlier, and for those that um, aren't aware just how difficult it was for any organization, particularly a big, complex government like this, to meet deadlines at the end of last year, I can tell you it was really, really hard. And Phil and his team and all the folks that worked on this uh, so-called R12 integration, which is still with us, it'll take a long time to, to integrate. Um, as they were finishing, Crossing really had to step up and do some things a little ahead of when they normally would. All of that led ultimately to this report delivered in time for us to refinance more than a billion dollars worth of our debt in the market there in the first quarter of the year, which was, uh, as we've seen the headlines, enormous head, you know, trend lines for us. So thank you for everything that you've done, both of you. And uh, with Phil, um, Phil's going to be at a long scheduled retirement beginning in August and says that he'll help uh, transition uh, over the, the months after that. So um, Phil, thank you for everything sure. you've done and everything you're about to do yeah. as we make that transition. Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Does the council have to approve his um, retirement? <laughs> so, I don't know about that, but Sheriff Hall has offered his services uh, to retain both Phil as well as Kim McDonald, retiring in July. Kim, I was going to ask you, Kim, <laughs> July, and I, it's, it's a lot. That's a lot we of... Have, we have well, some authority in this matter. I think so. If <laughs> <laughs> you just retired, I would say you're going to be busier than you ever have been. Been. Yeah, Everybody that, tells you that, that, and you do. Y'all have been here since, since I've started, and that's been, been a while for well, sure. 20 years. So, yeah, okay. so Congratulations. Well, a slow goodbye for Phil. You guys will uh, get a chance to see him again and wish him well before it's over. And I did announce today we have Janine Kaufman, uh, who is going to be taking on uh, this position. And some of you may know Janine. She was the CFO of the Titans for, I think, close to 20 years or so. And um, as much as I hate to lose uh, Phil, um, we're going to have to replace Phil. And having somebody with sports and entertainment background, it's a good time to do that here yeah. in Nashville. <laughs> so we're excited to have her, her join us. Uh, on, on the schedule, I know that we have over the recent years met to approve for the final audit before it gets, I guess, released, which just came about in the last audit committee, which was a really good idea. Uh, but it seems like that's usually the Tuesday of Thanksgiving. That is the, the Tuesday of Thanksgiving is typically our executive session to discuss it in draft and then it yeah, it's some meeting yes <laughs> and i don't know if that's uh, 
you know, it it kind of comes down to the, that's our big time we get to see it in executive session, and it's Tuesday of Thanksgiving, and one day we may not have a quorum. Mm -hmm. So I'm just throwing that out as a as an observation, because I usually think about it on the Monday yes. before the Tuesday, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because we don't really have another date. I mean, that's the main date, and then we have another meeting coming up to approve it. So it's it's the working session. So. Um, just, you know, it's an observation. I just don't want to, I know this is many, many thousands of hours, so I'm not trying to get in the way. Any other questions? Oh, excuse me. Bless you. Okay. Thank you, John. Okay. Is that more? Next, we have the follow-up audit of the Municipal Auditorium. This audit was initially done back in October of 2019. It resulted in six recommendations, four of them being high risk and two of them being medium risk. Um, shortly after the audit, they were all reported as being implemented. So following our schedule now for recommendation implementation follow-up, we went out and did our follow-up audit. Uh, what we found was that one of the recommendations had been fully implemented. Um, one was no longer applicable. It had to do with the credit card that they are no longer using. And then we had one that was partially implemented. The partially implemented one was related to all of the recommendations from 2011. Encompassed in 2011's um, audit was six other recommendations. Of those, three of them we were unable to determine. Um, unfortunately, additional three others from the 2019 audit couldn't be determined. And this is because the box office and all of the most of the operations at Municipal Auditorium have not operated um, at all during the pandemic. So for us to be able to audit them and see that the recommendations that we made were being were functioning as intended, we couldn't see them. Um, there was also one that was, um, or the, there was also one that had not been implemented, or two that had not been implemented at all, and these related to an asset inventory. Um, Municipal Auditorium has scheduled their asset inventory to be done in August of 2021 for those two to be taken care of. Um, the six that we were unable to determine, we will have to go out and basically do another follow-up audit. Um, as you'll hear later with a different one, if we've been out there and we can see that the processes are in place, but maybe we haven't had enough time for them to operate, we can kind of remotely do those types of follow-ups. With this, we weren't able to determine anything. So we have to wait for the box office to open up full functioning. We have to give it time for these um, controls to actually operate for us to go back out there. So you will see another full follow-up audit to be done of this once that occurs. Um, so that's currently where the status of this is. And with us, we have Don Harris, who's the director of the Municipal Auditorium. Um, so if there are any questions related to this one. Are you up to uh, operating standards now? Or are you able to take in revenue? We're open. Um, throughout the, the remainder of the summer, we're going to be predominantly rehearsals. We're, we're full July, August. Um, we won't see concert, uh, concerts until September, October, okay. and November, so. Thanks. So it sounds like <clears throat> if you're just doing rehearsals right now, you're not taking tickets, it's just. Correct, so correct. Again, when do, you, when, when do you think you're going to, assuming things stay the same, when do you think you're going to start opening? I would say September, October. We should start having concerts again. Um, we, have, we have one scheduled in October, one in November already. And we're currently renegotiating the Live Nation contract. So once that firms up, then we'll firm up a lot more dates. So, so fall. And does that mean, does that give you a time frame as to it when does. It'll yeah. be around the end of the year, because especially yeah. if they start in around September, fully functioning that box office. And that means that we will give them a little bit of time to get going um, and actually make sure that those, are those controls and everything are implemented before we'll go back out there and test them. Anything else? Okay. Next, we have the um, audit recommendation follow-up for the Nashville General Hospital procure-to-pay process. 
this audit was completed back in August of 2018 and resulted in 11 recommendations. Um, this was prior to us doing high, medium, or low risk um, associated with recommendations. But um, these were all accepted. They were all reported as being implemented. Um, when we went back out there, we found that seven had been implemented. Two of them were partially implemented, and they were implemented pretty much during our reporting phase of the follow-up audit. So they didn't have time to function for us to actually audit them. Um, another two were not implemented at the time, but have since been implemented before. I guess shortly before this meeting, um, as it was drafting a policy that had to be put into place. Um, this is one where we observed what they were about to do or what was going to go into place since it happened during our reporting phase. And now we will just request documentation from them and follow up to make sure that the recommendations are, op are, are operating as intended. And it won't result in another full report. What we have done with like the fire marshal's office is we will follow up remotely, um, go out there and check in documentation if we need to, um, and then at the end of it, we will send an, a memo to them saying we have completed your follow-up, your recommendations have been implemented. Um, with us, we have from General Hospital, Julie Groves, and um, are there any questions related to this one? So the two that have not been implemented, the policies there just have not been able to start, is that correct? That is correct. So both of those were dealing with a retention um, policy. We're going to have a hospital-wide retention policy for the whole hospital, but we have drafted the piece that is going to be applicable to the two findings um, for this audit. I've already drafted that and given that to Lauren. It will then be in incorporated into the overall hospital-wide retention policy once that's complete. Can I ask a couple horrible question? Sure. So there were 11, 11 findings. Mm -hmm. So when you all went to go check, you were told they were all done. Mm -hmm. So why does that happen? Because two of them weren't done at the time. Yes. Uh, that is what actually led us to start the recommendation implementation follow-ups, okay. um, is that oftentimes when we get reports back prior to what we're doing now, we just emailed the department and said, is it in place? Their interpretation of what is in place may be implemented, whereas when we go back out, we see that what is put in place does not directly address the recommendation that we made. Um, so it's, sometimes it's just a misunderstanding. Other times it's an instance where um, policies may have been drafted, but they haven't actually been followed. Um, so they're not completely implemented. Go ahead. Oh, so in this case, there's two the policies have been started, which May 28th, it looks like. So then do you follow up again to make sure that they're actually implemented? Yes. Okay. Yes, that is one where we will go back out there um, or request documentation showing that the retention policy that they have in place okay. is actually being followed. Yeah. I think that's a good a good standard that you, you, you determine yep. if it's implemented or not. So do the departments and agencies now understand that we're going to go behind them and check so that it doesn't work to just yeah. say it's all been done, that you're going to actually go find out if it got done. Exactly. So they should be telling you, like, we know you're coming, we've only done some of them. Yeah, it's part of the audit plan. Okay, it's all part of the big giant audit scheme. <laughs> and when they get their uh, emails scheme, from me. Whatever it's called, <laughs> scheme, game, plan, whatever. Strategy. And once the word gets out that they have, then obviously it'll mm -hmm. be in front of it. I, I, I want to go back, and this is I'll, I'll wait for new business. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other questions on? Uh, on the integration into the overall hospital mm -hmm. retention program, what's the timeline for that? Well, I will be honest and say that I haven't set a timeline for the hospital wide retention policy. Um, the retention policy for a hospital would be very complex, and so I, I have to set work group meetings um, to get buy-in from all the various areas to determine what data we're looking at, um, that, and then determine is there any state law or federal law on what the retention time frame is for that. If there's not, then what's the industry standard for it? So I would like to have it in place by, the, by year end, at the very least. And can I just say, what's challenging about a hospital setting is we're required to maintain 
newborn babies or mm -hmm. children until age of majority. Mm -hmm. So I have to keep fetal strips for 18 years. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, you know, so and, and it varies, but then from a liability standpoint, whatever we say we're going to retain documents for is then our charge. So if we're well, defending ourselves in a legal case and we have a five-year retention, then things that are six years old, technically, I don't have to produce. Correct. Right? So and I just say yes. it's a very complex sort of right. discussion. The procurement one is relatively straightforward, and that's why she put that one in right. place immediately. But it will be folded into a broader hospital uh, retention policy. Do you use electronic retention then? Are you? So we, you? We, have a we, have a, we have a combination of electronic retention as well as paper retention, yeah. but the policy will apply to both. Um, the challenge is, is that different types of documents have a different retention requirement. We might have some financial documents that require indefinite retention. We might have some security reports that may only require a, a one-year or two-year retention. And so that's where um, the retention policy will come into play. You'll have to list, we'll have to list out all of those various types of um, documents and the time frame in which to retain them. And then sometimes we, we will have to build in some additional time to factor in, as Bruce indicated, any sort of um, statute of limitations for liability type cases. Anything else? Okay. Okay. Next, we have the audit of fund commitments, restrictions, and assignments. This audit, oh, sorry. Yeah. I know all of you probably don't want to hang out with us. We've already finished up, so I was going to do you to get service and say nobody's watching if you need to go. Thank you. Sorry, I mean. Usually I kind of wait for the vice mayor to tell me when I can go. But I never get yeah, I know. Three hours at a time. I just can't see anything. Can I sneak out and nobody will notice? Is there a WebEx where you can just drop off of the video? That's a good one. Nobody knows. You, know. you took this job. We're going to be there. You're going to be there. <laughs> okay, so the audit of fund commitments, restrictions, and assignments. This was put onto the audit plan last year and one that carried forward. Um, it was put onto the audit plan because it was a recommendation from the comptroller's office when we did our annual request for ideas. Um, they had concerns that, or they had seen in other local governments where they had taken advantage of the um, designation of certain fund balance items to help their budget. Um, and so we put this one on the audit plan with the idea to look at making sure that there were controls around and processes in place that were effective and efficient. Um, looking at the designation of the funds and how they were set and whether or not those met standards, codes, ordinances. And then also looking at the disclosures in the annual financial report to make sure that they met the standards um, that are in place. Uh, what we found was that, as expected, finance had a lot of policies and controls in place, especially around this. Um, there were processes, the disclosures met the standards that we would expect. We ha ended up with two low-risk findings. Um, first one of being a implementing a comprehensive policy around making the uh, comprehensive annual financial report. Um, there were many individual policies but as a best practice to help with making sure that if there's turnover or if there are other individuals that want to look at how it's put together, since it's such a complex process, um, just making it comprehensive. Uh, the other one is around the disclosure of interfund balances and making sure that even if it's they're not supposed to go past a year for clarity and transparency, maybe enhancing the disclosure to say that the fund balances will be repaid within a year, um, or if they will not, the explanation for that. Um, both of these recommendations were accepted and have um, implementation dates before the end of December of this year. Um, and with this, we have Phil, um, our chief accountant, if there are any questions related to this audit. So Kevin did well on this one. <laughs> yeah, Phil, do you have any comments about this? Well, maybe provide some color. No, I mean, they, they were, uh, everyone was very easy to work with, and, and again, you know, credit to Crossland as well. But uh, again, the, the categories of fund balance are all 
driven by accounting standards, and we just you know want to make sure we're complying and uh, grouping things appropriately. So I was very pleased with the results. So uh, just something to be kind of an enduring comment here, particularly with respect to the comptroller's office, is that there is a constant escalation of more disclosure, more detail, more disclosure, more detail. And so just about the time you have one thing, then the goalpost moves. And look no further than the last round of legislation that the comptroller's office brought forward um, you know, with the state. There were a lot of things there, uh, many of which were not only compliance with, but we would do even better than what they would recommend. But um, there's 95 counties and they're managing to that as a whole. And so as we look at these, this is my third time to, to look at them, there's just going to be this constant escalation and trying to stay in compliance with all that. Um, in some instances, almost like you out of compliance with um, other parts they have or trending on the side of, well, it's just too much information. Nobody reads it. And so um, I, I, I like these a lot. I mean, it's always good to have these and so forth, but just for the enduring comments of the board, we will constantly have this escalation. Uh, the next one you'll see has to do with leases and the way the leases are reported. And I don't, I've been counting more than 30 years, and I can't remember a time when we weren't changing the rules on leases, but they have changed them again. So, a lot I could say about it, but I, I just don't think the day will come when we don't have reports like this. And hopefully, they're all low risk. Okay. okay. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, the annual performance review. How did we do on our homework? <laughs> um, uh, so, um, uh -oh. this is something where legal steps in just because it, the, it's the. One of the um, committee's um, uh, char charter prescribed duties is to annually um, uh, do a performance evaluation of the um, Metropolitan Auditor. Um, obviously, Lauren herself can't be directly involved in that except for doing the self-evaluation. Um, uh, and Bill and the other staff at Audit, it's, they're kind of conflicted out of being more directly involved in that as well. So just not because I have any particular skill in this area, but just because I happen to be neutral, um, this has tended to fall on the, the legal advisor of the committee to um, uh, collect and summarize this data. Um, so um, I used a performance evaluation survey that was last used for the previous um, Metropolitan Auditor, Mark Swan. Um, and I believe he had put it together. Um, uh, so um, as the chair pointed out, um, because we've had sort of a odd interim period of time where we had um, an interim auditor, and we, we had Mark, then we had the interim auditor, and, and, and then Lauren was officially hired. and. Um, uh, you know, we didn't necessarily have normal performance <coughs> evaluations for a couple years there. Um, so the um, survey that was drafted was really three years old, basically. Um, and um, uh, Lauren, I think Lauren is comfortable with being rated based on what Mark prepared back mm -hmm. then in terms of his metrics and everything. But um, uh, I did um, collect um, four responses um, to the survey. Um, one of them um, I don't mean to, was Mr. Bates didn't feel comfortable rating just yet because of his um, shorter, relatively short period of time on this committee, which seemed perfectly reasonable. Um, the other three responses, um, uh, the um, average um, that I had gotten um, for like overall performance for all of the categories was 2.62. So that's pretty high out of scale of three. Um, and, um, you know, the, the categories, I mean, if y'all saw the... Um, can, can I ask a question? Sure. How you, there were some areas that I didn't know Right. the statistics, you know. Um, I, I tried not so, to count those again. So I, so if, you, if it's blank, you're not counting them as right. a zero, right? No, you're, I'm not you're counting you're taking them as zero. The, I was just taking... And then there's some internal that I'm not in their shop, so I don't know. Okay. So... Um, so, so that that that, that Bill, is like a non-question. Handled then. the internal review of the staff. So. We have eight staff members, and then we sent out a survey, Survey Monkey, so it would be anonymous, and basically asked a series of questions such as, "Is the Metropolitan Auditor fair? Did they just create an environment where people would want to work here? Is it professional? Th things of that nature." And it, this was on a scale of one to five. And I, and I think the score was four point four. So again, again, another high score relative to the, the scale. But again, the way you, you didn't, 
you didn't count that as a zero. No, I did not. You just didn't. I did. I, I would just average the other two scores and divide by two rather than dividing by three. Okay. Sure. So, you know, I think we're, we're required to have a review. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're required to have a, a minimum grade. I think it just says a review on yeah. an annual basis. So, if you want to, you know, summarize that to get it to the committee or. Uh, I don't know if we make it part of our, I guess we need to make it part of the record. Um, so one of the other things that we um, talked about, uh, that Bill and I talked about, was um, whether um, you all wanted to take that evaluation into consideration in determining the auditor's um, is it a step increase? What is it? Open range. Oh, yeah. Open range. Sorry. I don't know the HR lingo. But um, uh, so the... The audit committee is kind of the appointing authority here, so you have to make decisions in terms of um, pay increases as well for the Metropolitan Auditor. And we didn't know if you wanted to do that today or um, at a future date. Who did compensation range? Of, you will need yeah. some. And, and guidelines maybe from Kevin, I don't know, or HR maybe. Well, if I may. Yeah, maybe you already know. Well, basically, you know, the council passed the budget, and in that budget are, is an open range amount. Right. For our office, it's about $30,000. So we have to figure out what we're going to do with this $30,000. And so we allocated among the staff basically based on performance evaluations. The only person we don't have is Lauren. Um, and so basically, <laughs> we have, and I don't know if this would be helpful, it's just a chart of the different range, like what our current salary is, and basically what would it be getting? 0.5 up to 4 percent. What that would, I would look like. like. I, I've been involved in those before, so I'd like to see if it's good. pass that down. It's where you're looking at that, and I'd love to have your help too. Sure. <laughs> uh, it's a very straightforward um, chart. It's just basically. Uh, I should give you all. Thank you. Go. There you go. Know there's something underneath there. I think that's good. That's all. Okay. Uh, while we. Let's, let's kind of wrap up the review part of it first. Uh, as far as, you know, this is a self-evaluation, I believe. Um, I have a self-evaluation. She so does you also have, have a self-evaluation. And I think for the record, it needs to be the self-evaluation as well as the audit committee's evaluation. The internal one, since we're not in the middle of that, to me that's a kind of like a, a, a an internal work paper. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, if everybody... It's, it's up to the committee to do the review. We didn't really. I'm glad we had that input. It sounds like it was very favorable, but the committee needs to be kind of how, how do accountable you, for Lauren, that. Did you do the reviews of everybody else then? Um, I have not been done their year-end reviews. So, uh, well, we haven't communicated them yet. Only because, as as I've done through this exercise before, is is that money. Yeah, I mean, you usually come up with, if you get a percentage or if you get a certain rating, you get an approximate percentage. At least we try to keep consistency. Yes, we have a methodology. Oh, do you yes. have a methodology? Mm -hmm. So I'm just thinking that's probably good for us to know. Mm -hmm. um, we have to adjust the methodology right now because it went from 3% to 4%. Um, but we do have an internal methodology for... And it's tied to performance for the most part. Okay. Um, so right. we would have to take into consideration the number that Teresa has. 2.62 out of 3. Is the overall average for the people who responded? Does anybody else wish to respond? It did not. I don't. You know, she didn't tell me who. Can I? Can I ask? Can I ask a good question? I mean, as we're we're talking about Lauren, she's sitting right here. Should should we ask her to leave so we can talk about? Her? <laughs> well, I mean, you can. It's a public meeting. This is an odd way to do a performance evaluation. Um, unfortunately, there's no particular <laughs> exception to the Open Meetings Act or the Public Records Act that protects this information. Uh, I, I, we're, we're, I, get so, it. I get it. I get it. Unless we're, but I mean, it's like part I of the just, cost of working for the government. She can watch it later, but I just don't. <laughs> Talking about. So the methodology that of a 2.6 out of 3, mm -hmm. what percentage did you indicate for others that with that with that score? Did you? It would have been a three. It would have been a three back when, we, but we haven't modified the mod, we haven't modified our methodology, so oh, okay. it would have been the highest level at, before. Okay. And so I, I will say also that I did get a, from two of the three people who submitted the substantive responses. 
said that their scores probably would have been higher but for lack of knowledge on certain categories that they were scoring on. So um, that's a grain of salt to take the into account along with the 2.62. Yeah, that, that, that gets to my point. Yeah. You know, if, if I didn't know, I, I elected to be blank instead of, you know, one or two, just guessing. And that may be something we can clean up next year. You know, we mm -hmm. just include the questions that the committee yeah. would actually I, know. I, I think what I would like to do is ask staff to take a look at the performance evaluation form and maybe like update it and add some more recent data for purposes of developing metrics um, so that next year you'll have something that's a little more up to date. Okay. When does it, would the increase start? Then? July 1st. Just July 1st. So we have to actually know. Mm -hmm. Do you have any? So a few things. Um, I don't know your department as well as um, mine, right? And I'll come back to that here in a second. But first of all, I just want to acknowledge it is a very awkward thing to do these in a public forum. That's mm -hmm. been the public nature of this has been one of the hardest things in my nearly two years coming to the metro government to get used to. So I know it's awkward. It's awkward for everybody. And this isn't the only place, you know, the only corner of the metro government where it's that way. So um, that said. Next is, I think you've done a great job. Um, I did fill that thing out entirely, um, as I would, and Phil would tell you, any of my others. And um, they're very worthwhile of doing um, within the finance department, which would be, I think, very comparable to what you're doing. And again, I haven't seen what your department's done. Um, and Phil was one of our biggest advocates for this, is that par is what we look for for everyone. So a two is, is a great a great thing. Uh, if you're trending higher than that, that's quite remarkable uh, in our department. But we've uh, tried to avoid the great inflation, as the saying goes, mm -hmm. and so forth, and just you know recognize that if you did that all the time, then you'd have this additional um, you know creep in compensation and so forth. And eventually, that washes up on the shores of the Metro Council. We get into pay plans and, and so forth. And so we try to be good stewards of that, at least um, uh, in the time that I've been here. Um, in this instance, um, one of the things that I'd be delighted to help with, if we could uh, delay just a little bit, is uh, to look at your whole department the way that we've done ours so that we get to the open range component. And I can tell you some of the things that uh, we've done that may or may not be appealing, may or may not lead to change, include Lauren in that. And I'd be glad to come back to the committee and say, here's what I would recommend. Um, but I can tell you that one of the things I would not recommend is waiting to our next scheduled meeting no. a quarter from now. Um, doing a special called meeting here um, just maybe sometime this month of July. July, I think it's very important. I think it's important for all the folks that work in the department and so forth and kind of getting us through this process. The other thing is just the dose of reality, which Phil will tell you I brought again to my department, is that um, I'm not sure how the referendums and so forth are really going to work out and whether at some point we have to return to hiring freezes and so forth. Um, I don't think we should run our business in and around all that, but to the extent we are, let's do things early. Let's be good planners. Let's know what it is that we'd like to do. So as a courtesy group, I'd love to just, uh, um, and I can do it as soon as you're ready. I'll make myself available in time. Go through it with you, maybe line it up with what we're doing, get back to this committee with a recommendation, and we can decide. Is that a do. motion? I'll make a motion to I'll do I'll second that. that. That's a great idea. And is there a timeline that will? Is Okay. Second. Uh, any okay. discussion? Yeah, I, I think it's a great idea. I, and, and could you do it almost in an email recommendation, or do we need to meet? You, you cannot electronically deliberate under the Open Meetings Act, so unfortunately you could not do it that Can way. Can we vote? Can you virtually do it? Mm, so. Not anymore, because the governor's executive order okay. has expired allowing virtual meetings. So we need meetings. to come in. I'll, I've just I'm sorry. The Open Meetings so Act is July. pretty strict. Yeah, that's fine. We'll get it done. We can We're gonna do, we it, do it. We'll do it. Phil, I would just ask that we do it as, as quickly as we can. Yeah. When, when is your next council meeting? It would be July. Second, uh, uh, it's no. the first first Tuesday of July, which would be the fifth. Is it July one? Six. 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 Too late for this. So we can do it in fifteen minutes before your meeting, just to make it convenient. If you guys aren't around, I'll. I'll uh, I already sent a note. I'm oh, going to be gone, but that uh, you might have a quorum without it. So. Um, yeah, if we can work it out the 6th, that's fine. Is, is that too late no. to do it? No, and I mean, even as Bill and I have talked about, you can make retroactive adjustments. So even if you waited until us, even if you waited until September. I will yeah. say I will be out of town on the 6th, but I'm not sure you really need me. <laughs> and I mean, we can provide another lawyer to cover the meeting, but. Or Mark or somebody, okay. Probably Tara. Would, would that be? Is this a community uh, date, or am I just making making it too hard? That's a good idea. That way, it, it'll go fast. I mean, I think we should do it as soon as possible. And um, and you did say there, you, we were allowed to have retroactive. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we'll get so you get the first couple of weeks. Okay, okay. so that does cr you know create some mm -hmm. degree of flexibility in case it's a holiday week or something. Yeah. So uh, we uh, meet the two days after the fourth. Yeah, we meet all the time. We mean, like I'm trying. Week. I'm I mean, trying to see if we could go ahead and get, but if, can if, if we can do it retro, do it. that's fine. I like do it tomorrow. <laughs> well, I need a little time. Does that help? Okay. It helps, and uh, we'll just try to get a quorum. We just need to vote on, vote on your motion. I had, I'm still. Oh, you're discussing. still thinking? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were ready to go on. <laughs> no, no. All right. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Okay. Yeah, and also, do we have a right motion to accept the, do you want to do any more work on the uh, review? I, I mean, I don't know that, I, as far as like, you know, math. Is, do we need to accept that review? I, no, you, you, I mean, not necessarily. You, you need to, I mean, I, like I said, well, if we're going to wait until July 6th, then I can kind of just send you the relevant data and like table form or something like that. Okay. And then y'all can just, I mean, I don't have anything like substantive to, to add in terms of analyzing it. I'm just. I didn't know if we need to. I was just kind of looking at them collectively and summarizing them just because I wasn't in the chain of command. So it wasn't awkward for okay. me to do that. Is, is it okay that as Kevin figures out and makes a good recommendation, then we could see that electronically? I'll be gone. I'm going to be out of town. Now. I, I can send stuff to can you, you electronically. You? Okay. Absolutely. Um, it's only the electronic deliberation prohibition only functions in between members of the committee. So to staff, to me, you, you can email all you want. That's good. Thank you. Anyway, it's, that's, that was a good review. Congratulations. Yeah, good job. Well done. Uh, okay, Tom, you said you had new business. Oh, yeah. If there's anything, no, uh, that's the end of the new business. Oh, it's, so okay. I put you on there. I, I, I'm just going to throw out an idea that is, in the, at least in the hotel corporate world, is self audits. Is as I, there's a there's a long time frame in between audits, and it, what. what I recognize within it, having managed hotel and hotels and all this stuff is when you get this, I was just talking to Lauren, when you get every year we have a, a self audit review. And what it does, it does two things. It educates me as, as the manager or department manager uh, on uh, some level of accountability and education on what my staff or my hotel would be doing. And I see the a correlation there with the department educating them on uh, what's supposed to be happening. So by the time you get to an audit, if you have reds, there's something wrong if you were able to educate people over a period of time. So, so my recommendation is, is having a self-audit in some fashion and maybe an educational process where you, you know, here's cash controls, here's the segregation of responsibilities. Those terms aren't, you know, it, you might, if you've been through enough audits like me, on the other side, but but the reality is, it's a great training tool because uh, the brain or, or, or the the uh, understanding of your department and, uh, and in my case hotel uh, changes because you're always looking for those aspects because I know now okay that person cannot handle cash because you know you have to have oversight someone else has to open the you know the, the, the things I just think it's a great training for self insight and also the, for those departments that may not have an audit for five or six years, I think it creates some value. Um, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you know, we are going to have something happen that's more major uh, because they're looking at it in a different light. So <clears throat> I had mentioned this before, but I really think, I, I don't know how that would be handled. That's sort of a, a, a different, but if there was some self-audit, uh, I know for me, I, I took it seriously. And then when it, an auditor came in, I, I was like, okay, I think I did all this right, but you really feel like a certain sense of responsibility and accountability. Mm -hmm. And also, it's good to know what you know and not know. Um, I, I was always nervous because you know, I have some accounting background, but not enough to know what I didn't. But I think that really creates a higher degree of awareness. So my thought is, um, I, and again, I don't know how you would execute this, but at the same time, if there was a way where the department has would have Maybe it's not the, the really detailed audit, but here's segregation of responsibilities and here's how it should work in general terms. Here's what we, here's, here's the, the code or what our expectations for audit or accounting procedures within your department. 
Um, because, you know, in everybody, department managers are experts in their field, but they're not experts on internal controls. And I learned that. <laughs> and, and so when you do that, I think you, it's just a great learning experience, but also is a great preventive uh, and a great educational process. So anyhow, my recommendation would be, I, I, I don't know how we do that, but it would be to take it to the you know, to audit and have some kind of training or self-audit of, of some system. I'm just confused. What, what is it you want to self-audit? Are we talking about uh, each department or? would maybe do a self-audit. So you, they would have maybe a, a, a set of checklists that says, okay, we are taking ca cash handling should be handled this way. Are we doing it in our department? Oh, I see. Uh, and so there is, uh, we're receiving checks. Is this, this, this? And then it refers over, you know, just real simple terms, but you could, you could cross the language over so that people could read it. And then over here is if you want more information, like our cases, then go to, you know, counting statement 102 in an IHG, and it tells you a little bit more. So when you do your self audit, <clears throat> I know year after year I became more and more knowledgeable. And then when you do get an external or an audit like this, you, you feel comfortable because this is my understanding as a department. Because, uh, and, and again, some of these departments don't get audited for five or six years, maybe even longer. It, it just creates a higher level of, of awareness, I think. I, I don't think it has to be a sophisticated one, but I think you already probably see what are the big issues. And then you could create maybe a training or learning component for it. Now, there's so many departments, I might be adding, asking you guys to do a lot more, but I just feel like uh, having gone through that, it's, it's a, it, there's a value to it. Um, a couple of things come to mind. Um, one is, we just won the referendum lawsuit. That's why everybody's phone's blowing up. So, <laughs> <laughs> I imagine a law department is going to need to do our home tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that's okay. what, it, yeah, everybody's phones were blowing up because they, I, I assume the Chancellor just ruled on it. Just ruled in yeah. favor of Metro. Okay, good. Being one of the two plaintiffs in that case. Oh, good. Okay. That was taken Bob Cruz called me like five times. <laughs> good news. Okay. Yeah, so. Um, I, I felt my phone kept yeah. doing stuff. Yeah, it all came in at the same time. So a couple of things. Um, I think anytime you want to do a checklist and, and get the internal checks, or they're good. Um, I've not thought about this one before. I will say that um, we are getting some acceptance and some pushback over the big effort for performance improvement management that Kristen and the Wilson team okay. is running. And so um, yeah. I think we'll hear you know, the uh, external voices of our department heads and some elected officials and so forth saying, oh my goodness, you know, we're so glad to be accountable and so forth. In the background, it's really hard for them. And they're pushing back saying we don't have time and so forth. And so I think what you'll find is a uh, folks like me would say, well, sure, the, the more we can do, the better. The practicality of it, there may be a gap there. But what we can do is um, catch up to Kristen a little bit and find out where she is with major departments, performance metrics they already have, and which ones may say, we would quickly implement this, maybe to be a um, some sort of a test or a pilot case for us, and try that, uh, see what we can get implemented, and then see if we can spread it to the others. Uh, I would say the most resistance we're likely to encounter in doing something like that is not going to be with the departments. It's going to be with separately elected officials at their offices. They regularly object to uh, tweaks and controls and, and so forth, and large part because they don't feel like they have to, and it's a burden, and yeah. so forth. And um, that's not to be judgmental of what they decide to do or not. That's not really my role in that right now, but rather that is say that there will be some pushback um, to do. You could almost do this. I, I'm talking out loud, so I hope you don't mind. But I almost could do it an educational process, right. and just say, you know, if you're like many of us, you know, and in, in, if you're an outsider, you, you, you don't know what this it feels like. But the audit in a, in government where it, trust is so critical right. th that we just want you to be more aware of some of the things that could go wrong. And, and it could be like an educational process the first year, and then you could slowly add to it. I, again, I think there's such a value for a department manager or for someone that owns a particular fund to be aware of it. And, and you know, I've talked to a couple of people along the way, and, and, and you know, I'll even talk to some of their mentor council and segregation responsibility. What, what's that mean? I, I just use that as a, a, a clear way to, you know, create some level of controls. 
and, and all that just, it, nobody thinks about that stuff. But once you do, it doesn't have to be so complicated, but it could just be through an educational process that slowly improves over time. I would think that we have a lot of departments that do this type of thing. They do constant improvement, checking, uh, especially around cash. I don't know. It may not be a widespread uh, thing. If I look at two years of audits, I would say I didn't see a lot of consistency. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Though. They're doing a lot now for a lot of things. I mean, all the way from our normal routine things you'd expect out of accounting to um, you know, FEMA, TEMA reimbursement, polling them about that. Hazard pay has been a big one. Um, Phil could probably help me. Anyway, it's, it's, it's probably a good conversation, and sure. I think you but, do have an initiative that's kind of maybe you could dovetail with the internal audit staff and see. Yeah, I'm glad to do it. Um, it, 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 needs, to do that. We'll get yeah, yeah, it needs to be something that uh, people look at it that it's making them better and saving time. Yeah, I think, so. I think you're right, exactly. And I know performance management, I'm a big fan of that. I, you know, I talked about that last year as to it. I think you don't want to mess it, it up. Good, but at the same time, I do think <laughs> over time, um, these, uh, these guys' jobs will be so much easier when you come in and, and it doesn't sound so foreign. It would be ideal to yeah. do all that. Um, are, we so, getting, be, are we getting ready to lose the quorum? No. no. Okay. I, I said I, it was okay if I left. I have to get to another so, thing. Just to conclude, why don't I look into what the possibilities are and see if we can find a test case um, okay. a couple of them and I'll bring it back. Sure, absolutely. Does that work? Yep, absolutely, and, and, and I only bring it up, I, I think there's a value not only for Lauren and, and the yeah. team, it, there's a value for individuals to be, um, be preventive and, and to understand <laughs> what's coming in. Because if it's a black box, someone's coming in to study me, which here, Jim, uh, which has happened when I first started as hotel. So it's like, oh my gosh, what are they going to look at? And I didn't understand the terminology. And now, uh, you know, you feel like, okay, where's here's, you know, let me go check the people that are doing this stuff, and and you you understand. Anyhow, I, I just think um, having been here for two years, uh, that there's that value to to do that. Um, and you get a department manager who's been there for a long time. So. Okay. Um, the CJ. So at the last meeting, we discussed um, having something in the bylaws around this about having uh, members of the audit committee either be required to have CJ's clearance or putting something in there would kind of hold us accountable since we already do the annual review by the bylaws to, to make sure that somebody on the committee always has um, CJ's clearance. Um, there was discussion about putting some language together, and so if you can see in the workbook, there is, um, I put it under other responsibilities because it's kind of the only place that it really fit within the bylaws, and just put a little bit of wording around it. Um, we can discuss now, or y'all can look over it and then get revisions or anything back or decide to include it. Um, I put it at one, but preferably more, um, just with the thought that there is turnover on the audit committee sometimes, and so it may be harder to maintain more than one. Um, but. I just, I've had to use it recently, and so when I first saw this, when you were Jen, I was going to say, whoever sits in the director of finance chair should be required to do it, period. Mm -hmm. On that, but the more I've thought about its uses and where it may come up in the future, I, I'm going to make a motion that every person that serves on the committee should be required to get it. It's not hard to get, it's important to have, and when you need it, we're really going to need it. So, why will we ever get caught short of that? And, and that's been recommended before from, I think, I don't know if it was Mendez or someone had suggested that, yeah. that too. And I totally agree. Now, you know, as far as and I are going to be coming off the committee in, in, after August, but I. Uh, I mean, I would have no problem doing it. It's just a matter of, um, you know, whoever comes in should, I think the whole committee should have it. It's three hours in, Dan. By the time you do the training, drive over, get your fingerprints, fill out the form. Yep. When you need it, you're really going to need it. Is that, uh, that conversation that we had was, I don't think it went all the way to make a motion. And it was a conversation like, okay, well, why don't we all try to do it? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and while I think the wording should be, something, and this is me, you know, in order that we don't violate our bylaws from day one, uh, it would, you know, something like it would be desirable, it would be an objective that all members, 
you know, have it, you know, something of this nature. Because right now, if if we do this, I have two members that are not in compliance, and you don't plan to because in two months you're not going, you may not right. be here. Uh, would would oh, something like that be, you know, oh, yeah. is it desirable? Is the trip. objective to do it that right. everybody be that I have it within two months of an appointment to the board? Uh, however, the, it's going to work, but I just think we all because you know that would really help on anyone, any of us, you know, because only we only have two positions that are by, you know, by your your job. You're on the position. Everybody else is appointed. They need to know what to expect. Right. But Jim is too, but the uh, I yeah, think everybody yeah, should be expected. I, I agree with with everybody should be expected to have it because if you keep it optional. Yeah, I'm um, just saying yeah. the wording is there is a transitional time. It's expected yeah. starting, you know, whatever, right. but at some point in time, I mean, so I wouldn't mind getting it. It just seems contrary to, I mean, with knowing that probably this might, I don't know if this is our last meeting or not. I'm not sure, but um, so just to um, be careful where I go with this, but during this budget process, so literally within the last three weeks or so, um, there was an issue that came up in that budget process where I thought I would be in touch to ask for a special call to any of this group. I stopped short of that and realized I was the only one that could actually share the information with the CJ's clearance, and so I killed it uh, another way. No, I, I respect uh, your yeah. opinion. I'm, <laughs> I'm just trying to make it workable that, yeah. that, that well, I don't have, we don't have members that are disqualified all that. transition period, something Yeah, like that. something of that nature. Do we need to make a motion to include that, or how do we? Do you want, you can make a motion to include it, or I can reword it and send something out to be approved at the next meeting yeah, if you'd like to yeah. give time for yeah, individuals. Gonna be, we don't have that meet bylaws, so let's make sure we're yeah. And that clear September is usually the meeting where we approve the bylaws um, okay. annually. Okay. But, um, so I can put together wording around it. Or I think we're going to do a special call meeting for Tom. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and that being said, I, I don't know if this, you know, should be expanded outside of just it looks like you've learned a lot about how you could use it yeah. and it, does it need to be expanded in in other departments in metro that we don't have any say so over but it's just best practices mid does is pushing that um just with the whole email thread separately and i think kristen wilson's trying to okay promote that um they're not moving as quickly as i think that we need to so maybe this will be a good fire starter okay thank you that's you're welcome it's where that's a good point. Okay, I'm going. Um, um, just the quick administrative things. We have uh, for our ongoing projects, we currently have seven projects and two investigations that are currently going on. Um, we've issued seven reports so far this year, um, making headway through our audit plan, as you can see on 32 and 33, um, and working through that and on track to, to finish the audit plan, most likely. Um, there's any questions about that our next piece is our recommendation implementation follow-up um, we went from 59 at the last meeting to 48 um, all the departments that had recommendations due by the end of June they all responded um, all of them were implemented except for two that needed revised dates these were from Metro Water Services related to the fire hydrant audit that we did. Um, they initially had an RFP out to actually address those recommendations. Um, as you see on page 35, unfortunately, when they took over solid waste, it expanded the scope of the work that they needed the, the RFP for. So they had to cancel the RFP that was out in 2020 um, before it was awarded. And, put it, and they're working to put another one out that will include the scope of solid waste. And so they hope to have it done by the end of December of 2021. Um, but that was the only adjustment. All of the other ones were reported as implemented and we'll go on our tracker so that once they're all cleared, we'll start follow-up. Um, this is really good. Yeah. I mean, a lot of progress made mm -hmm. just starting this mm -hmm. time, uh, the follow-up and then getting it down to this. And mm -hmm. That was, yeah, that was great, I think. If nothing else, I remember a couple of years ago when we started, just to know that, that there was no follow-up and to know, I mean, why would you do anything? Four years yeah. later, it's, so it's great. And I think it'll go down to even some of the comments you made earlier about your yeah. some best practices. That, you know, I think we're making a lot of progress. Our budget status, we're still under budget um, as we still have two open positions. Um, this is 
we're coming up to the end of the fiscal year. We do have three larger invoices that are going to be coming in shortly. There are two consulting contract invoices related to two projects that Kraft and Barry Dunn are doing. Um, and then we also had our audit software invoice come through. So though we're at 65% in this chart, it's going to go up. It will we'll be closer to being around our budget um, with those two, uh, two open positions which the open positions leading into our staffing. Um, since our last audit committee meeting, we actually did four internal promotions. Um, Bill Walker was named our audit manager. Seth Hatfield Congratulations. is Thank now, um, Seth Hatfield is now on our management team as principal auditor. And we promoted two of our auditor twos, Laura, um, Laura Henry and Nan Wen, up to senior auditors. Um, we're very lucky that we have a huge talent supply within our office and we're able to do all these internal promotions. Um, but that leaves us with two open Auditor 1 positions. We posted the position um, in the, about in the middle of May and accepted applications throughout May and now we're in the process of doing interviews Good. for those. So hopefully at the next meeting we'll have a full staff. Is it hard to find auditors? We got, we got a lot of good um, applicants going through them and finding which are the best fit. It's, I mean, we didn't get as many actually as I thought we would, um, but hopeful. Talent is scarce. Yes. And my pals in private practice are making a <laughs> fortune for them. So. Yeah. You can't go, you know. What's that? You can't go back. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where we are. Okay, um, and I don't, I don't know if uh, you're, you guys are allowed to have uh, interns or not, or if Metro uses those that type of, uh, you know, uh, you have summer interns, and then that's, that's a great project to develop that, mm -hmm. you know, rising juniors. <clears throat> Like kind of get, you know, mm -hmm. We've actually it. thought about that. That's one of the, the paths that we're thinking if we can't get these two positions filled, that especially since we're getting into the fall, which is typically when people start looking for internships, and there's a lot of great colleges yeah, you, around you here. You bring in rising juniors, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you, you can you know, you yep. make an offer before they graduate. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I'm sure the county's been doing it forever. Yeah. We, I mean, we, we have 8 to 12 every tax season. Yeah. So anyway, that's just you know, just a hiring strategy that worked well for our company. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, is there any other items for uh, that we need to go over in the committee? Thank you. Thank you for the thing you go do. I was uh, I downloaded this uh, whole book electronically and was going over it uh, the first uh, few days just to get ready for this meeting. That's an incredible amount of work you do. And I know it's not been easy during the pandemic, so thank you. No, and it's, again, uh, good to see everyone. Um, yeah. Is there a need for um, executive session? Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Session. We're adjourned. Good job, everybody. You can take a yeah. sigh of relief, I guess.